Okay, everybody, thanks so much for joining us today for um, our, our latest uh, information session about the new public art roster with the Maryland from the Maryland State Arts Council. Uh, we're really glad you all could join us. We have some familiar names here, but um, we are excited that this roster is ready to, to receive your applications and tell you about it. So um, we're going to get started. I'll begin by introducing myself. I'm Ryan Patterson, the Public Art Project Manager here at MSAC. And I'm Lisa Fenner. I'm the Program Director for Public Art. Welcome. Hello, my name is Rosa Cheng. Uh, I'm a project assistant at MSAC. Thanks for being here. Uh, we're going to go through our grounding slides that are probably familiar to you if you've attended other MSAC programs, and then we'll jump right into the information. Start with our land acknowledgement statement. Just, um, whoops, sorry. We acknowledge that the lands and waters known as Maryland are the home of its first peoples, the Akahanic Indian tribe, the Assateague Peoples tribe, the Cedarville Band of Piscataway Indians, the Choptico Band of Indians, the Lenape tribe, Nanticoke tribe, Nase Waywash Band of Indians, Piscataway Kanoi tribe, Piscataway Indian Nation, Pocomoke Indian Nation, Susquehannock Indian Nation, Indians, Yagahaney River Band of Shawnee, and tribes in the Chesapeake watershed who have seemingly vanished since the coming of colonialism. We acknowledge that this land is now home to other tribal peoples living here in diaspora, and we acknowledge the forced removal of many from the lands and waterways that nurtured them as kin. We acknowledge the degradation that continues to be wrought on the land and waters in pursuit of resources. We acknowledge the right of the land and waterways to heal so that they can continue to provide food and medicine for all. We acknowledge that it is our collective obligation to pursue policies and practices that respect, sorry, respect the land and, and my view is, and water so that our reciprocal relationship with them can be fully restored. So that is part of a statewide land acknowledgement statement that Maryland State Arts Council has worked to compose. So you can find out more about it on our website if you're interested. Our equity and diversity statement is that the arts celebrate our state's diversity, connect our shared humanity, and transform individuals and communities. The Maryland State Arts Council and its supporting collaborators are committed to advancing and modeling equity, diversity, accessibility, and inclusion in all aspects of our organizations and across the communities of our state. MSAC and its grantees are committed to embracing equity and non-discrimination regardless of race, religious creed, color, age, gender expression, sexual orientation, class, language, and or ability. The vision of the Maryland State Arts Council is that we play an essential role in ensuring every person has access to the transformative power of the arts, and our mission is to advance the arts in our state by providing leadership that champions creative expression, diverse programming, equitable access, lifelong learning, and the arts as a celebrated contributor to the quality of life for all the people of Maryland. Our organizational goals are to increase participation, provide intentional support, build capacity, leverage connections, and bolster Maryland arts. We always like to be reminded of our creative meeting actions to celebrate being in the space with other creative people, engage with everyone's presence as a gift, acknowledge that together, collectively, we know a lot, enter these conversations with curiosity and inquiry, share our ideas, trusting they will be heard, use I statements, focus our language on the tasks at hand, hold one another accountable with care, apply yes and, I hear your idea, let me add to it, and balance our role speaking and listening. So all that stated, um, we are excited to talk to you about a very specific aspect of our work today. We are, as you learned, the members of the public art team, the public art program here at Maryland State Arts Council. And you may interact with us in a number of ways. We have, as many of our programs have, we have a grant program. 
And a lot of you are probably aware the deadline is tomorrow, April 14th, for our spring grant deadline. And that grant program awards funding to support the planning and development of both new public art across our state and the conservation and preservation of public art across our state. So those are really great opportunities that you should learn more about if you don't know about, but we're not going to focus on that today. Today we're here to talk about the other half of what we do, our Artwork Commissions Program. Our Artwork Commissions Program is the state's percent for art program that commissions new artwork for what we call capital projects. And those are large scale new buildings and major renovations to state buildings. So we're gonna focus right there and about the new roster that will help us select our artists for those commissions. Just reiterating, this is not a grant program. Capital projects are a completely separate process that are related to the state's annual capital budget. Every year, the state publishes a capital budget that lists all the new uh, major constructions and renovations happening across the state. These include labs, facilities uh, that host state employees, office spaces, um, university buildings, uh, lecture halls, libraries, uh, anything where government employees uh, work or, or work out of are included. And you can find that list by Googling, you know, Maryland state capital budget or capital budget program. The law states that 0.5% of eligible construction costs from those projects is put aside as what we call a public art premium, which is a fancy way to say a, a budget or a percent for artwork. It's the percent of money we put aside to purchase artwork or commission artwork for that building. And Something important to note is that most of these capital projects are funded through what we call general obligation bonds, or sometimes are referred to as GO bonds. And why is that important? We don't really need to get into the technicality of what a GO bond is, but what is important is that they have their own requirements of how that money needs to be spent. And one of those requirements is that they, are, they, they have to abide by interstate commerce laws that allow for interstate um, exchange, commercial exchange. So um, we don't preclude uh, contractors or architects from out of state from working in state. With same goes for artists. We are open to artists nationwide because we want artists from Maryland to be able to go work in Chicago and San Antonio and the state of Washington and Kansas City. We want artists from all of those places to bring their talents and ideas here uh, for that open exchange. So um, that's a big difference than the other grant programs we manage that this is a nationwide program. Liesl is going to give, give us some examples of recent artwork commissions from state buildings and facilities. Uh, please just tell me when to advance, Liesl. Yeah, why don't you go to the next slide? Thanks for the opening and uh, hello to everyone joining. Uh, these are a few of our projects currently in the state uh, collection at the moment. Uh, we have a project um, out in the Eastern Shore at, at Army National Reserve Center. Uh, the artist had not done public art before, but um, was a two-dimensional um, illustrator and worked essentially at a scale of like two by three feet and then had his artwork digitally enlarged and printed into this, as you can see, two-story scale uh, mural that now adorns the lobby at uh, this National Readiness Center in Easton, Maryland. Next slide. Um, we have many projects at University of Maryland campuses. Um, a lot of new STEM buildings, um, science buildings are being built. And this was an exciting project uh, for a life sciences building. This is by Volcan Alconoglu that spans, as you can see, sort of in the back three uh, 25 foot by 25 foot walls. Um, we call it sort of two and a half dimensions because it's uh, projecting. There's some relief coming off the wall. And this is extruded aluminum that's been painted and attached to the wall. And it's a really exciting space to experience for the students and faculty alike. Next slide. We also uh, work outdoors. And this is a work completed by uh, Michael Singer Studios. Uh, it's a water garden and the water um, is uh, recycled and returned into the system. 
There are light components at the, the rear of the project, as you can see towards the windows, um, as well as an interior component of a living wall of plants and cast sculptural elements um, in a student study area. And it's uh, been really well received uh, by the students at this uh, new STEM building in, in Rockville, Maryland. Next slide. Uh, last summer, we had the debut at a animal health lab on the Eastern Shore in Salisbury, Maryland. Um, this was an artist who had received one of our Public Art Across Maryland grants. And so he's, you know, risen up with his portfolio of work and uh, secured an artwork commission. And this is uh, stainless steel welded into a very large scale feather that uh, graces the entry to the building. And inside in the conference room are carved um, horses, as you can see. Uh, horses are seen at this animal health lab. And so uh, he was covering the range of poultry and animal livestock that um, this lab uh, researches. Next slide. We're in process right now with two artists, uh, Michael Jackson, sorry, Martha Jackson Jarvis Studio, um, as well as Wesley Clark. Um, these works are gonna grace the lobby and the second floor, floor hallway. Um, and they're in process right now. We wanna make sure people know that um, artwork commissions can take two to three years to uh, design, to, to, to get contracted, to design, and then fully fabricate and implement a work in a completed state building project. Next slide. Ah, I'll turn it back to you, Ryan. Thanks. So uh, this is gonna be pretty information heavy for a while, but I promise we have time for questions at the end. So uh, if you, as we're going, if you you know have a question, feel free to drop it in the chat so we can refer back to it or um, just write it down on a piece of paper for yourself if that's helpful and, and we'll come back around. Um, but um, here we go. So, so you know, you may be familiar if you've applied for one of our commissions before, uh, or, you know, you've looked at other like publicartist.org websites or something, you may see that we have up to this point in the last, I don't know, two, three years that I've been here, we've put out every single um, artwork commission as an individual call for artists. So we regularly have been publishing um, calls, usually in the form of an RFQ. And a lot of them have taken the form because we, we may be coming into the building while after it's been designed and kind of underway, we may do like a what we call an RFQ plus RFP or RFQ plus proposal. We'll say, let's shortlist a number of artists and then let those folks develop a full proposal for that building. So that's what we've been doing to date, and it has been received very well. We've got a ton of applications, but um, it's a lot of work and a very time-consuming process. Artists are left to wait a very long time as we go through a sometimes six-month-plus process of artist selection. Let's also add that those three to four semifinalists are always per pay, paid proposal fees. Absolutely. Um, and we have a proposal, we give a stipend um, for that work. So kind of building on that, we've noticed some challenges with this process. Um, one, for the people we're working with, they may not be arts professionals, but they're excited to welcome art to their building. They're overwhelmed with a multi-hundred you know, number of applications. They may be having to review 250 to 350 applications for every project. It's overwhelming and really more than they can get through and maintain their energy and interest in working with that artist closely. And um, we also have a, seen a thing that, you know, is probably just, you know, good professional practice, but artists feel like you have to apply to everything. So even if something is maybe not in your wheelhouse, you're just putting an application for every project. And so it may not even be that good of a fit. And we're trying to decide how serious an artist maybe is or not on that level. From the artist end, you have that pressure that like, if I don't put myself out there, how will I be seen? You're then competing with 250 plus applicants on every one of these projects. And especially for these emerging artists and people who are building up a public art portfolio, it takes time and it takes opportunity. How do you compete with somebody who's received 
dozens of um, commissions in the past and you're trying to get started when you're all in this singular kind of big pot, right? And it's, it happens over and over. We've repeatedly seen this process favor artists with the highest number of prior completing commissions. And it's just not an equitable way for the artists that really deserve to get more attention to be seen when we do this for every single project. It's also counterproductive to our commitment, our stated commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion, as I went over in the beginning of this presentation. So the idea here is to add a roster, a process that many other states and cities, municipalities use, where it's a kind of a um, established list of artists who are on a roster that can be called to um, be considered for every given commission. You don't have to apply every time. And um, we have this list to refer back to. It's not going to replace the call for artist process. We're going to maintain that opportunity to use an open call at any time, but it is going to be an addition to the process that we're really excited about announcing. So how will it work? Uh, artists nationally, again, will apply to be included in the roster. Uh, you'll apply one time with a portfolio of work and a statement. We'll get into those aspects. But that application should, once you're accepted onto the roster, you'll be eligible to be considered for projects for up to two years. And um, those applications will be reviewed by an independent group of panelists that are composed of individuals with backgrounds in public art and are paid by MSAC to review the applications for eligibility. If your application is eligible and included in the roster, again, you'll be on there for two years. Uh, we're anticipating, you know, it's having this first batch reviewed by this summer. So that July 1st starts fiscal year 2024. And we'll use this through fiscal year 2026, which is, it's a little confusing, but that's July of 2025. Um, the roster will also be published online as a resource for organizations in our state to refer to, any, really anywhere. But uh, when we are giving out grants to organizations and they're seeking artists, they can look at that roster, not as a sole place to find artists, but definitely a starting place to find artists that are interested in working um, around Maryland. Just want to note that you cannot be both an applicant to the roster and a panelist. Those are separate. And um, if you want to be considered as a panelist, we would love to have you apply for that, but you cannot also apply for the artist roster if you're serving as a panelist. So how does this roster benefit artists? Just to reiterate again, it's a one-time application. You don't have to apply and constantly monitor when these come out. You get on there once for two years and you're there. Um, the idea is that we will pull smaller groups of artists from that list that are appropriate for a project based on criteria that you self-select. And we'll go over that aspect of your application. The administrators, uh, Lisa, Rosa, and myself are empowered to advocate on your behalf to say, you know, we really think you should look at this group of artists and this is why. This is what they included in their application and we really want you to look at them rather than looking at the full you know, batch of, of people that apply to every single project. And you get to have the recognition of being on the roster. You can include it in your resume, you can link to it almost as a web presence. Um, and uh, if you're on multiple rosters already, this should feel a lot like those other rosters uh, in a very similar process. So who is eligible to apply for the roster? Uh, both individual visual artists, as we said, nationally uh, open, and artist teams or collectives. So um, you could be a, a collaborative group or a studio that works collectively and is submitting a single application as a team. You do have to be um, living and working in the United States, and you cannot be currently enrolled as a student in any degree-based program. If you're enrolled in like a how to do CNC routing class or, you know, how to use the laser uh, or 3D printer at your local makerspace, perfectly fine. But if you're in a degree-based program, you cannot be on the roster or considered for a commission. What does it take and what, what, what are the application requirements? Um, it's fairly straightforward. And again, we've modeled this as closely as possible to other established rosters that we, we thought were good models. Um, it's your contact information, 
10 images or artwork samples, the information about each of those artwork samples, so your, your basic like title date, medium budget, but there's also some descriptive information you can include there. Why was this commissioned? When was it installed? What's the context that we can't tell from this, this photo or video? Um, and then rather than like a specific statement of interest, we're asking for more general statements. So a biography, who are you and why do you want to um, be considered for this roster? What's your background? What do you bring to this project as a, as a individual or a team? And then what's your work about? A separate statement about your artwork and practice, because we want to know, you know, how do you like to work? Um, how do you approach projects? And what do you specifically um, bring to public art and collaborative public environments. Um, and then there's a whole list of specific preferences that you'll get to self-identify around project types and materials that you like to work in that will help us self-select or help us select you for opportunities. Um, if you're selected for the roster, you're basically agreeing to the following. You, if you're selected, you are open to creating work for, for public space. Um, Public art commissions take a high level of professional communication and collaboration uh, with people from multiple different departments and agencies. Um, you will have to work with professionals and designers to, to develop your concepts and ideas into shop drawings and buildable projects. You may need to travel physically to the site where you're going to be working to meet with collaborators and community members and um, install your work. Um, you will need to work within a fixed budget and a certain allocated amount for this commission and a timeline. You will have to be registered as a vendor or, um, or a business within the state of Maryland. It's not a complicated process, but it is required for you to be paid by the state of Maryland for these commissions. And you will have to adhere to any kind of state requirements. And these are usually involved in the artist contract around what types of um, minimum wages you may have to ha pay, or um, if you have any subcontractors, contractors, how you will work with them. And um, you will have to, of course, be responsible for any applicable taxes as part of um, the commission contract. Uh, but the big thing, what is, makes public art different than maybe you know, being a, a studio artist or even maybe just um, a community artist who's working just directly with people um, in your neighborhood is, is the kind of integration here of the public audience and the site and the kind of constructed built environment. So artists that are receiving app, um, commissions should be prepared to work in ways that are site responsive, um, that are um, making works that are built into the fabric and the built environment that are architecturally integrated if possible, uh, maybe using building materials that you haven't worked in before, but translating artistic vision and concept into um, permanent built materials that are maybe applied or help design with an architect and engaging with the community or the public audience that will um, see and live and experience this artwork every day. Uh, that could vary. Community is a broad term, right? But it doesn't just mean the people outside in the neighborhood. If it's a um, courthouse, the community of people who use it is very different than a college library or a um, animal lab, as an example, right? There's different communities or different audiences for each place, and you'll need to kind of understand that group and investigate them and find ways to engage with them on your own way. A couple of notes about the application is that um, the artwork you show must be your own. If it's a collaborative piece or you were an assistant or maybe you fabricated it and you want to show us that you could build this thing but somebody else designed it, that's okay, but you must note that and credit any collaborators or partners in those image samples. Um, if we look back and go, hey, I think that's a Lisa Fenner piece, but um, Ryan's showing it as his and it's not very clear, that could be grounds for being removed from the roster or not being accepted in the first place. Also note that acceptance to the roster does not guarantee you'll receive a project. We're expecting that in a single year, we may commission six to 10 artists, but we expect that there could be hundreds of people on the roster. So um, it's still that big pool. It doesn't mean we're gonna be able to award everybody who is on the roster a project. And um, you must submit one application. You can't do uh, a Ryan Patterson application and a Ryan Patterson and Friends application. You must do one application, either as an individual artist or a team. 
how will you be reviewed for the roster is a question we've been um, working through a lot and um, um, we're, we're pretty happy with, with this process. So this is modeled closely on what the state of Washington does. And we thought it was a, the most equitable example we'd seen. Um, so there are th these four eligibility criteria that the roster applications will be reviewed on. Each application will be reviewed by at least three of our panelists and you must meet three to four of these eligibility criteria. So um, these are artists, communicates a unique artistic vision and perspective or perspective. Artist demonstrates an authentic relationship to subject matter. Artist shows an ability to create site responsive work, engaging a site and or community. And artist demonstrates a command of materials and or skill in technique. This is just kind of a graphic of how we expect things to work. Lots of artists will apply. In the purple here, the applications are reviewed by the panelists. Most applications are likely to meet those eligibility and be included in the roster. If you are not included in this, this review, we will provide feedback and work with you on tips about improving your next application or other resources you might pursue to build up your application um, to reapply in the next round. When can you apply? Now, the, the roster is open. Um, we did this info session a couple of weeks ago or maybe a month ago, and unfortunately it wasn't open yet, but we are excited, it is open. The application to be a panelist is also open. If you know somebody who you think would be a good reviewer of these applications, please encourage them to apply by Friday, April 26th. But you can apply as an artist by Wednesday, May 31st. So there's plenty of time to assemble everything, um, to draft your statement, have a friend look it over, revise it if you need to, and get that application in because we have a lot of projects that we are excited to see your work for. Okay, so I think that covered it. Um, I am pretty ready to get going, right? Like we are ready to apply. Yeah, and uh, the questions are popping up in the chat. So um, we just need to make sure that um, everyone reads, downloads, and reads the roster guidelines. And so they're on our website. Here's the URL. Um, go to the Maryland State Arts Council uh, tab, programs tab, then public art, and look for the Artwork Commission's roster. In that roster document, it's actually a fillable form, and we're going to show you the template that's at the end of the roster. Ryan's going to share that right now. And we highly suggest that you open up this PDF. It's like I mentioned, you know, fillable. And uh, actually, we'll we'll just show you what. Can see this. No. Yeah, the guidelines can, look like. You may be tempted to jump right on the submittable and just make your account and start making your application. But we really encourage you, go through this document. It has a lot of just like the written information we just shared. It's got the kind of overview of MSAC here. You go down. This stuff, you're probably used to seeing this if you've seen our grants. Page four, we start talking about the roster. It's a lot of what I just went over but read through it, refer back to it, use it to check your, your questions maybe. But if you keep going down, we tried to make this a helpful template. So before you jump into your application, you can use on page nine here, we start a template that you can, it goes over all the things you should know about, about preparing your slides and all the types of um, images, image files we accept, and then it even gives you a fillable form. So I could just try that out, right? I could say like, oh, like um, the, my first artworks, like self portrait, and then I completed it in 2020, 2002. You can fill this out for yourself ahead of time so that you can cut and paste the information directly into your submittable application. And we're actually getting some great questions. Um, someone asked, uh, do you, what's the minimum number to 
uh, of images, you must submit 10 images. If you do not submit 10 images, you are not going to be reviewed. Um, but that can include details of work. Yep. It can, can you can zoom in. Yeah, you you know can show perspectives of your work, how it you know was situated uh, at the site or wherever it was uh, hung. Um, Maybe there's a straight on shot and a shot with people interacting with it and the detail of the material. So, you know, it's okay if you only have maybe one or two projects that are complete. It can also include renderings of projects you're proposing but haven't been built, but just to show us what your design style um, was like. And it was a very key component at the end. Yeah, or, so I'm trying yeah. to scroll down. <laughs> examples. Sorry. So here's, no, here, you're fine. So again, use these templates. This is more information. What is your, what should your biographical statement cover? What should your artist statement cover? And then below that are these self-selecting questions. Um, these questions, this is very important. I wanna be very clear. These questions below here will not be shared in the review. This is your eligibility will not be considered based on these final questions, but these will help us sort and filter the, ro the roster after it's established. This is self-selection. We are not going to check your work or, or there's no grade here. It's just self-selection. We want to know where do you consider yourself in your public art career stage? That's not, um, you know, if you're 40 years old, you're a mid-career. No, it's how long have you been making public art and how do you, where do you feel you are in your public art career? Then these are the types of buildings and facilities we, we generally commission artwork for. Let us know which ones you're interested in. If you are not interested in ever making artwork for a college or university, uh, don't select that. We won't consider you for that. We want to know where you do want to work and where you're willing to be commissioned to make artwork for. And then there's a whole series of labels that will let you self-select. Do you work in ceramic? Is your work colorful? Are you interested in environmental art? Uh, no, no, these are your current, this is what yes. you currently work in. What does your public art? So there do? was a question earlier about what kind of balance should the artist submit in those 10 images? Because this person has um, past public art projects, but um, there's, I guess, newer work in a, in a newer style or medium. So your 10 images are presenting how you're seeking to move forward presently in your current body of work. Um, so in selecting all of those um, labels of the type of of work that you you do, um, we want to see that reflected in those ten sample images. So um, it's it's great to hear that you, you, that we have someone that has a challenge narrowing it down to the ten images and what what to include. Um, but uh, a good question, Lisa. I'm going to start going. To, I, I I stopped sharing, but I can bring it back. But I can start going on to questions if you'd like. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. So this is a good one. Um, what work samples would you suggest a team submits if they have no previous public installation experience? We would select, we would suggest that if you've not worked as a team prior to this, um, it could be a challenge being selected because the samples are not reflecting your collective voice um, in what you could possibly create for uh, artwork commission for the state of Maryland. So if you've worked together before, um, we also want to emphasize there's um, uh, lots of details in these contracts. And so if you were working as a team, it would be ideal that you already have an LLC that you're incorporated. Mm -hmm. And if you're not, I would suggest that you in, you apply independently um, as individual artists. And then there was a, a good question of, you know, if we need to submit a budget, how should we determine the amount of budget? And that you answered this, that we will not be, these this roster does not require you to submit a budget and we won't be doing that. 
if it's helpful for you as an artist, we have a budget template on our grants section of our website. If you were applying or trying to propose a project elsewhere, that might be a helpful um, reference, but that is not required for the roster at all. Um, um, right. Someone's asked if an MP4 uh, format video counts um, as one of the 10, yes. If perhaps you have a kinetic work or video or work that you know was is captured better in video we suggest that it not be over two minutes um it, it you should have the most important information at the beginning of the video there's no guarantee that a panelist will uh review the full video so but that can be considered one of the images and then what is the deadline for the roster it's may 31st and um, the next deadline would be around 2025, the summer 2025. Yep. Um, <clears throat> so Michelle asks, after being accepted onto the roster over months and years, can an artist update their profile by adding photographs of newly completed works? Yes. So um, this roster is only until 2025 and anyone on the roster must reapply to be um, renewed. And um, if you let's say have a project that debuts next year in 2024 and you wanna send us your images to have those included in your uh, 10 images, uh, we can do that because we realize some projects might be in process right now. Yes. And of course, if you're not accepted at this um, 2023 um, stage, we will open again in 2025 and you can reapply then. Um, so we'll do renewals and accept uh, new artists. Helen asked a good question. Um, she has some commissions from 25 to 30 years ago. Um, I mean, and Helen, do you want to just maybe unmute and ask this? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, this is a conundrum for me. I have two public art commissions. Um, there's, uh, uh, they're from 25 to 30 years ago. And they show that I could do a huge project. You know, one's on the wall of a row house and the other one is a big wall in an elementary school with a lot of pieces. Um, I'm afraid that if I just put 10 pieces that represent my current work, they won't realize that um, I had that experience to, you know, working with the community, uh, specific situation, and, and then pulling off this rather large thing. If they just see a bunch of sculptures, the biggest one of which is five feet wide and a foot and a half tall, that's going to make me look like they're not going to get a picture. But, you know, and I've been on panels, and I know that you know when people are seeing images whiz by, um, <laughs> they're drawing a lot of conclusions from what they see. So I'm I think including those, do. yeah, including those prior projects would be excellent, as well as a combination of what you're um, currently working on, or or what you feel would best, you know, represent what um, could be translated to a public art project, um, 2D or 3D. Okay. So um, we don't put a cap or you know um must have been you know built after a certain date we, we don't have those uh restrictions yeah i agree including both is probably the best way to go because we want to see both what you're creating now and what's represent uh, representing the type of work you may bring yeah. to a current project as well as what you've done thank you there's a great question about how many um this breakdown of emerging mid-career or established um, and, and how you scale yourself. Well, these projects are up to a million and a half dollars. If someone's established, we would assume that they have worked um, on projects 
um, probably in the six figures. Um, I don't want to discount that it could be lots of projects under six figures, and definitely you could still be considered established, but we will be also looking at um, the size of the project budgets that you've um, managed, and that also can be applied to visual art that perhaps isn't located in the public sphere, but perhaps it was part of a overall gallery installation and what that budget was that you managed for creating all of that work um, for that particular type of installation. So um, as well as established, you know, we'd be looking at design experience with architecture teams, um, design teams that will be, you know, an, a, a very critical component of the um, this process. So I hope, uh, that might provide a little guidance here for folks, but I don't think um, I, I want to be the judge of someone's portfolio. I think it's best for the artist to make that decision. And there is the great question. Can you still apply if you don't have any work or experience doing public commission work? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. 100%. Absolutely. And, and as, if you have a desire and an interest to work in the public space, uh, we are excited about that and we want to help you get there. Uh, and so we hope you will apply, but it's really important to be, um, I think, thoughtful in your application about describing, you know, how you, how you intend to work and, and the way you would approach a project and the materials that you are comfortable working in um, and are able to work in. And yes, um, the, the there's a question of um if you did three views of a single project or single artwork would that count as one of the 10 images each image you upload counts as one of your 10 images so if if um you need to show details of the piece um a broad view and a detail shot that's two images. That's two of your 10 work samples. And there's some tips about approaching it. Um, at this point, you know, um, I would be, if anybody wants to just unmute, um, yes, please, Pamela, go ahead. Sorry, I had to figure out how to unmute. Can you hear me okay? We can. That's okay. okay. Um, so I did a um, site specific installation at a museum. And it involved um, set seven images and seven um, um, sound design um, that go along with the images. Can sure. I use that as seven different samples? I mean, the the you know the piece itself, one would experience you know one right after the another as part of one unit as part of one project. But could I use that as seven different samples? I mean, I'm very new to doing um, installations and I've never done a public installation, but I did do that one installation for the museum. Yeah, I, I think you could. I mean, that you could fill up seven spaces that way. I mean, it sounds like it's, it would be received as one project. So, um, you know, maybe if there's an overall image and then you want to focus on those seven individual experiences or iterations, I, that's that would be an acceptable way to do that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And there's a question um, to Chelsea. Um, if you don't have any experience in public art, could you still be selected to assist with a project to gain experience? So that's a great question, Chelsea. And we are just as interested in um, the mentorship possibilities of what an artwork commission could offer to um, emerging artists who are interested in going into public art. Um, I would encourage you to still apply. Um, if uh, artists are declined, we might have a way of um, reaching back to artists um, to capture interest in serving as mentors. At this time, we don't um, have a direct means of, of um, looping you or, or pairing you with a uh, selected artist, um, but we are 
as staff very interested in it, making sure that happens. So I would still encourage you to submit an application. Yeah, I'm going to just add to that. And I mean, everything Liesl said um, is is true and something we're very committed to looking into. Um, you know, th just this uh, project. <laughs> I feel like if it, when you present it, it seems kind of simple. It's like. Yeah, it's an application, you know, but we started, I don't know, chatting about this last summer. We hoped, I'm going to be really candid, you know, we hope to launch it in December. Here we are in April and it's government money and we're trying our best to serve all of you and especially the citizens and residents of Maryland as best we can, but it takes some time. And so we're, we're super proud that we got here and launched this and we are super interested in figuring out ways to mentor and encourage more artists to be working in public art. And that's probably the next thing we'll try to take on when we can. Um, if you don't hear from us or you don't see us say, hey, a mentor apprenticeship program, look at who does get on the roster. And if you find somebody's work that you're really excited about, reach out to them and tell them why you're interested in it and ask them if they have any projects you could help out with. You know, we are not the filter or the gatekeepers to this work. Uh, we just want to help more people work in it. But um, um, it's it's exciting to know that you would want to, to learn from others. I think it's a great way to work. And keep applying for public art projects in wherever you live. Um, I actually also encourage folks to look up, look up um, for public art programs in their region or in the next state. Your, your first project may not be actually where you live. Um, in Maryland, we have a public art listserv. Um, and so we um, promote local projects, you know, folks that are looking for muralists or looking for a sculptor for a trail project and artists are welcome to, um, you know, apply to these local projects. So if um, you're a national artist, definitely look in, you know, your area for opportunities. Um, we are just one of over 400 public art programs nationwide. So um, you've got to sort of dig far and wide into the arts councils, both the local and state arts councils to find out if they have a public art program. And um, so uh, we're we're excited that you know we're starting this roster because we're following you know several other states that that use rosters and have had you know great success. So just before being conscious of time, before we end today, I just want to go over these one more time. Our next steps are um, go to the the artwork commissions page of our website, download and read those guidelines. Uh, use that template to start crafting some of your, your responses and definitely take advantage of the time to show it to your, your friends and your best critics. Um, not the people who just, just cheer you on, but the people who say, do you really want to say it that way? Or do you think I'm showing this picture? You know, um, get, get that feedback before you, you hit submit. Um, start. Can I interrupt there? Cause actually we got to remind folks when you're on this roster, it's going to be on the web. So your bio and your statement and all those images are open to the public, not your contact info, but um, make sure you edit and you know make sure what you're submitting is a public facing statement that you don't mind other people reading. Absolutely. I have a question when it pertains to that because the like, I wouldn't, so the, the project that I had mentioned earlier with the um, seven images and seven sound designs that go along with the images, I mean, I would want to be judged on that for, um, to do future work, but I wouldn't want to display the entire art, the entirety of the artwork online. Um, might I do like maybe, maybe a percentage of the sound design to accompany you know, each one of the seven images. Um, is that like, you know, because like, so, you know. Well, the edit you share with us is should be what you were willing to share publicly. Okay. All right. Then maybe I do five of the images and five um, 
portions of the sound design as separate files so that I could separate it. Would that be appropriate? That I, but, that, but then I would have to explain to the judges like which image goes with, with, with what sound file or- well, we, I, I'll actually like to share uh, that. We actually, um, in many projects, um, the works are static and cannot incorporate technology other than lights. And so if you have five files representing your sound, you might want to be, um, be strategic in communicating a diversity of your portfolio that would be applicable to the site responsive work um, that the public art program commissions, like what we showed in the prior slides. Oh, so so five separate sound, sound uh, samples um, would be, you know, they might not all get listened to and it, it might not increase your chances of being selected, you know, as a semifinalist to compete for a project. So just to clarify, are you saying that they that in all likelihood they wouldn't even consider a um, in, as a, a, a an installation as a public space like focus speakers where correct it could be somebody was correct standing. anything that needs to be turned on or maintained um, no right. it would be, I mean there would have to be permanent focus speakers so that if you're standing in a certain spot anybody who's standing in that spot hears this. But they may move a couple of feet away, and you won't hear. Yeah, no, we're not commissioning any work um, like that. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, um, and it's it's just uh, that we're not responsible for the artwork after it's complete. The state building, the the occupants of that building are responsible for the artwork, and you know if something has to be turned on or off, or if wires require. Um, if something happens and it needs maintenance, there's a real challenge in terms of the logistics of uh, getting that artwork uh, uh, maintained to be presented as it was originally intended. And so uh, unfortunately, I mean, we would love to see new technology. Well, sound is not new technology, but the technology that would enable further um, uh, sensory experiences, but unfortunately, we we just can't. There's just not the maintenance at the state level to do that. So not even something on a monitor, even. No. Nope. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. But I'll just add, and it's a bit of a, an aside here from the roster, is that a project like that, or doing a new version of a project like that, Pamela, to build up more more experience, would be very eligible for the grant program that we also offer you could do that, it would be self-directed and that would be a good time to build up a portfolio. If you're a resident of Maryland. She, I, I, I am oh, a resident of Maryland. Oh, oh cool, great. So we would be happy to talk with you one-on-one -on -one about how to do that. I'm gonna put my email in here um, since it's here. And, and that, would that be for a creativity grant or some other kind of- The creativity? Public Art Across Maryland grant. So oh, this okay. round, our grants are due tomorrow, um, but we will, have another round after July 1st for next year. Okay, thank you very much. I will look at that. Thank you. I appreciate that. And Ryan is your go-to help um, for questions on the guidelines. If you have questions on submittable though, um, they are uh, available um, nine to five, Monday through Friday, they're on mountain time. So you've got to allow for a two hour time difference, but they will get back to you for any technical questions on submittable. Um, but do download the guidelines and read them through first. Um, I'm sure a lot of your questions might get answered, you know, as you go through the, the details. I can't I um, see the chat, but is there any closing questions? Well, thank you, Helen. And um, yeah, we are, we're going to be just for everybody's uh, clarification, 
tomorrow, to probably all night tonight and all day tomorrow, we are going to be up to our ears in questions about the grant program, which we did not talk about right now. So if we don't get back to you about the roster right away, understand we will next week. But we are here to chat with you, help you figure out your application. So hit me up. You can book time. I like if you email me and say, I'd really like to go over my portfolio with you. I can give you some office hours. We'll have like a one on one video call. Um, but we are going to be in Grant World for the next 24 hours. And then it's all <laughs> roster. So um, thank you for all, all for spending the last hour with us. If you're watching this as a recording, thank you for spending the time watching that. If you are reading about this and interested, thanks for your interest. And we will return the last four minutes of the hour to you. <laughs> thanks, everybody. thanks, everybody. Thank you. So much.